So, July. I'm not gonna promise anything anymore. I don't even think that a monthly update might be uh, plausible anymore. I will attempt my very best from now on, but like I said, I'm not promising anything. However, <clears throat> I have lots of stuff to tell you guys about because I obviously have done a lot. It's been two months since my last update for you. Uh, first of all, I will say I have a camera, finally. I just haven't had time to actually use said camera <clears throat> to do a video vlog for you guys. So I'm still stuck to the computer, but this means that you guys actually get the upload a lot faster and a lot sooner than if I actually used the camera because then I have to upload and technology and myself, we don't get along very well. Or should I say technology and I? I have to say one thing about working in China is that your grammar is just shit by the time you've been here for a couple of years. I can barely English. It's horrendous. Um, so something to uh, work on when I come home and go back to Canada. <clears throat> well, the last time I left you guys, it was May. I had mentioned to you that I was going to be having a friend visit me from back home. So my friend Amanda has come and gone. On the 8th, she arrived in Hong Kong. I had to go in to go pick her up from the airport and was incredibly ill to the point that I could barely move. Like I was in just so much physical pain. It was not overly fun, but I mean, it's nice to see her. So we went to our hotel at night in um, Hong Kong at Chunking Mansion. So I'm sure I've mentioned Chunking Mansion before to you guys. It is this gigantic building uh, in Hong Kong on Nathan Road. And downstairs is a whole bunch of mostly Indian restaurants and little stores that you can buy like drinks and just trinkets and things like that. And upstairs there's about 50 to 150 hostels, give or take a few. Um, just ridiculous, but the prices are pretty good, so that's where we usually stay when we go to Hong Kong because we're cheap. Um, it's also a great experience. I mean, it's really sketchy, but uh, nothing's ever happened, so it just looks sketchy, but isn't actually sketchy. Um, so she arrived really late, went, finally got to the uh, the hostel. I had to actually take a taxi. She was still like the metro had closed already. And then we woke up fairly early in the morning for having gone to bed so late and after, you know, 24 to 36 odd hours of travel or something like that for her. Um, <clears throat> we went and got a burger, which I know isn't all that exciting for somebody who just came from Canada, but for somebody who's lived in China on mainland for two years, Anytime I get to go actually get real meat is really exciting. Not to say China doesn't have real meat, um, that is false, but they eat very little meat in their meals. Uh, having an actual big burger, like one of those big ones, very rare. Uh, so we went to Disneyland after our burger, spent the entire day there. That was a lot of fun. I love going to Disneyland, doesn't matter where I am even Hong Kong, which is really small, uh, but we had a lot of fun there. Um, and then we ended up at a bar Delaney's. I've been to a couple times. That's spread right across the street from the hostel. So it's a good area. It's a nice little pub to kind of sit in and you can have a couple drinks and just talk. It's, it's really relaxing. So the first day overall was pretty low key. <clears throat> the second day that we were uh, in Hong Kong together on the 10th, we went down to the pier. It was pouring rain, which is very unfortunate. So we didn't end up spending the money to go up in the eye. There's very similar to in London, where there's the giant Ferris wheel kind of thing. Um, and you can like see the entire city or the port or whatever. Uh, they have one of those, the pier, and in um, Hong Kong, but like I said, it was raining, 
is a really expensive to get up there. It just didn't seem to be worth our money. So we just kind of wandered around, talked. Um, we ended up going to Soho after that, where there is a one of the largest outdoor escalators in the world. It's not really an escalator in some areas, more like a moving ramp than stairs, but it's still really cool. It's kind of neat to be able to be like hoisted up this gigantic hill in Hong Kong rather than have to walk up and then you can see a whole diverse area of Hong Kong that you wouldn't normally get to see. Um, <clears throat> we went all the way to the top, almost towards Victoria Peak, which again is something I had wanted to do, but because of the rain, it wasn't worth the money and you don't really want to walk around in a garden in the rain. Um, so we went almost all the way to the top through this escalator. Um, we got to see uh, one of the mosques and we went to see a temple, Manmo Temple. Um, and we managed to find a really cool retro store. After that, we headed back down the, the city hill, I guess, into Mong Kok area. I mentioned before, I think Mong Kok area is the area of Hong Kong that you think of when you think of Hong Kong. All of the pictures that are taken, all of the pictures that you see of Hong Kong on, online usually are of Mong Kok. This is the area that has all the booths where you can haggle for pretty much anything. A lot of clothes, lots of random trinkets. So we went and did a little bit of shopping down there, kind of wandered around, and we ended up at the giant mall near Mong Kok area um, that I can't remember the name of at all. But it's a really cool mall. There is a sky bar, an oyster sky bar at the very top of the mall. And the ceiling actually looks like there are like clouds and things. It's, um, it's pretty neat. There's also a 4D movie theater there. So while we were there, we decided that um, because we have to go back to Hong Kong for her to leave, we might as well buy some tickets. She really wanted to see X-Men. So we got some X-Men 4D movie tickets that day too for later on in the trip. So something to look forward to, which was good. Um, the next morning, Amanda decided she really wanted to go back to Disneyland. It was the first time she'd ever been. So we had a couple hours before our train left to go back to Guangzhou. So we went to Disneyland for the morning because why not? It's free. You don't have to pay to get in because I work for the company. So might as well. So we went to Disneyland for the morning, rode a couple of the rides. And then we headed to the train station to take the train back into Guangzhou so she could go meet Walt. Uh, Walt ended up coming into my apartment early to help me out with a couple things, which was really nice. So we had some pancakes that night for dinner and uh, just kind of hung out and watched some movies and stuff. And then the next day we went, headed into Ponyu for a true Chinese experience. So we wandered around some of the wet markets to see the different meats and vegetables that you could buy. and um, It's done very much like a farmer's market kind of idea. A lot of their grocery stores, essentially, this is where a lot of the locals will buy their food rather than going to a grocery store, is a, a type of farmer's market idea. It's just a lot... Um, less sanitary than we would be used to back home as far as our farmers markets go. So it's kind of an uh, interesting experience to walk around one. And then we went to a family style Chinese lunch after that, which was pretty good. Um, from there we left Walton Ponyu because he had to work the next day. And we went into Newtown. So we wandered around Newtown and saw the Opera House and the Canton Tower all lit up. Um, ended up at the Brew because I have talked about the brew a lot, so my friend wanted to go see the brew. So we went to the brew, where I had to, of course, buy an Inception shot, though we had a little better of an Inception shot, um, just way too much. They, they didn't quite do it right anymore. Uh, they put way too much alcohol in the cups. So one of the shots we wanted to take was an Irish car bomb, rather than like um, whiskey into beer which is terrible. So we thought an uh, Irish calm bomb would be better. Well, there was like, in like there are fairly large glasses, like about maybe that big, and they had put in about this much Guinness. You cannot down that much Guinness for an Irish car bomb. So it's 
it curdled by the time you got halfway through the glass. It was so gross. But we did that. We had a couple drinks. It was a buy one, get one free kind of thing. And then um, we decided to head out. And Amanda wanted to just keep drinking. So we ended up at Perry's near my house. Very, very Chinese version of a Western bar. Really loud. That's kind of cool. Um, you can get some really cheap shisha there. I don't remember partaking in shisha that night, but we had a couple beers. Uh, met a couple guys there. That it was kind of interesting and fun to talk. I mean, any conversation that I've ever had in any bar with any other foreigner in Guangzhou has always been interesting. Uh, and then we ended up back at my house. Um, that night is rather infamous for the two of us, not for necessarily good reasons. Uh, so we won't get into that, but the next day, uh, we kind of did days apart. We, we weren't really hanging out a whole lot the next day, we'll just say that. So I spent the day at a cafe and kind of caught up uh, just on re rest and relaxation. I hadn't been feeling well, I had been working nonstop until then. It was really nice to actually have a day to do absolutely nothing. Um, and then I went and bought some sushi for us for dinner that night, and we watched some Deadpool, and that's pretty much all we did that day. It was really relaxing. Uh, the next day, unfortunately, I had to work. So I gave her a bunch of directions, wished her the best, like, good luck. It's not that hard to get around Guangzhou, thankfully. The metro is really, really good. It's one of the best that I've ever lived near. Um, so, you know, I, I figured... If you have the directions, you have the keys to my house. I have my phone on me, even though I'll be in class for a couple of the hours throughout the day. I think she'd be able to do it on her own. Um, so I left her at her own devices when I went to go to work. And then uh, that night we ended up going across the street and we had some hot pot together. Or as close to hot pot as we could find near my house. Um, I now know of a couple other places, unfortunately, that have better hot pot, so my parents will get to try that, I guess. Um, and then the next day I had to work again. So the 14th was my Saturday, it's my short day, and by short day I mean nine hours. Um, the, four, or the 15th is, was my Sunday, that's my long day, so I had to work 12 hours that day. And that night, Sadly for everyone here in Guangzhou, one of our good friends, Flick, she finished her time with Disney English and she decided to go back home to England. But we all wish her the best and I'm sure she's found something. She's very, she, she's really good at what she does, so I'm sure she can find a job really easily. Um, and she's with her beau, so everything's good. But we had a KTV farewell for her, so this was... It was kind of nice that this happened at the same time Amanda was here because then she got to go experience the KTV experience here in China, which is something I think everyone needs to experience once in their lifetime. I'm not a huge fan of KTV, especially back home where you're in a bar full of strangers you don't know, you're up in the front singing in front of them. This is just your friends and family and you're all in your own little enclosed space, very much like a, I don't know, like, or house essentially is what it looks like to me um, but it's a lot of fun it's really interesting you can drink and sing and so we had a good night um, and then we went back to my house the next day I took her out for dim sum because that's also an experience that you have to have while you're in the south of China dim sum is very much a southern Cantonese thing so the dim sum here in Guangzhou and in Hong Kong are really really good it's very authentic so we went for some dim sum and then I had to go back to work <laughs> so I wasn't allowed to have the entire time off she was here she was here for a lot longer than either one of us had anticipated so I was unable to take the entire chunk of time off um, but I could get time here and there and then I brought some food home and Walt ended up meeting us at the apartment that night um, because we both had the Tuesday off so that we could fly to Shanghai. So on the 17th, we woke up fairly early, got to the airport, and we flew to Shanghai so that we could go to Disneyland Shanghai. Um, Walt was lucky enough that he won a free night stay at the Toy Story Resort 
in uh, Disneyland Shanghai. The whole idea behind this is having the local staff uh, or the foreign staff, I guess, who work for Disney come in and experience everything with everyone that is working there so that they can work out any kinks that need to be worked out before paying customers go in. So that was really neat. Uh, the three of us got to share this hotel room. It was really cool. I mean, overall, it was just a regular hotel room with Toy Story stuff, but it was still a really cool experience. We also got free um, meal tickets for one meal. So we got to go down there and experience the food that they had in the hotel. It was really neat. I would love to actually stay at a different um, Disney resort now just to kind of compare, I guess, and see what it's like. Um, but it was a lot of fun. It was a really nice hotel room. Really comfortable bed, <laughs> which I haven't had. Like, my bed here is pretty nice. I bought a mattress pad for it from Ikea, but the beds in China are like rocks. And I missed having a really nice soft mattress. It was so wonderful to be able to sleep absolutely comfortable the entire night. Didn't wake up with any pains. Oh, it was beautiful. Um, that night, so we got to the resort, we checked in, looked around and everything, and then we headed into Shanghai itself. Because the Disney Resort is kind of on the outskirts, just on the outskirts of Shanghai. So we went into the center to the Bund, uh, which is the where you see the pictures of Shanghai from. It's right on the river, and you could just see the Pearl Tower and everything. And there is a, an area that has some really great dumplings or jiaozi. So we went for some pork jiaozi and went and toured the wall or the, the waterway and got to see the Pearl Tower all lit up. So it was kind of nice. And then headed back to the resort. Because the next day, we got to spend the entire day at Disneyland Shanghai, which was really cool. Um, the Tron ride is awesome. I have to say, like, I love Space Mountain. I did not miss Space Mountain at all because this, they had the Tron ride instead of Space Mountain. So what it is, it still has that um, science fiction Space Mountain feel to it. But it, instead of a normal seat that you're strapped into, it is a bike, which is really cool. So, I mean, you're still strapped in. You can't go anywhere. You can't fall off. Um, but you're actually crouched down like you're riding uh, one of the speed racers from Tron. It was really neat. It's such a cool ride. Um, the other really cool ride that we got to do was the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. They have improved it for mm -hmm. Shanghai Disney. So they've taken the traditional Pirates of the Caribbean ride. And now because everybody knows the movie so much better than the original ride, they've incorporated a lot of the movie into the actual ride itself. And it was kind of like this really epic 3D experience that was just absolutely incredible. Um, some of the, the graphics and things that were a part of the ride were just amazing. That was one that we did, I think, about three times. Um, just kept going through because it was, it was really cool to experience it all. I will say, however, like, the castle was awesome. It was huge. Um, it's the, I think the biggest in the world now for Disney uh, castles. But Shanghai Disneyland is very similar to Hong Kong Disneyland in the fact that there is actually not a whole lot of rides. The Chinese definitely value aesthetic over content to an extent. Um, they're all about external beauty, looking as good as you can look, having the park as beautiful as it can be. And it was really beautiful. It's a really nice park. The rides look really cool. Everything was immaculate, especially for for pictures that I had seen of the front before I got there and of areas of Shanghai that I've seen and other parts of China. Sometimes it can be a little dirty. Um, so for where it was and what I had experienced before I got there in Shanghai, I was impressed at how clean it was, how beautiful it was, but a lot of the park was more aesthetic content versus actual content. So some of the rides were like walk through the castle. Um, there was one where you could strap yourself in and just do an obstacle course. Um, the other one was there's like a boat ride that went under the castle. Uh, 
didn't seem like it was that long of a ride, but the wait, oh my God. We waited, I think an hour and 15 minutes or something ridiculous like that. And we were like halfway through the line. So we kind of gave up and we all left to go do something else because we had tickets for the Snow White ride. And like, like I said, the aesthetics were beautiful for all the rides, but in the end, I think there was only like six major rides that they are actually really proud of and like tell you about. I think there was like a couple extra rides, but overall we only got to do, like there's only so many that were open and then there was only so many rides. It was kind of odd. Um, the ones in the States have a lot more to actually do. The shows though, the shows were pretty cool as well. Um, I will say, doesn't matter where you go, any Disney park, uh, I hate Mickey ears. So for anybody who goes to Disneyland, anywhere in the world, if you go to see a show, please take off the Mickey ears. If someone's sitting behind you, they can't see anything. All you can see are these giant ears and maybe a bow. It's ridiculous. And the Chinese people love the Mickey ears. But be courteous. <laughs> be, be aware of your surroundings. And if there are people behind you, especially young children, because you are in Disneyland, take them off so they can see the show. Please. <laughs> like Awareness is something that is greatly lacking in this country. And... Uh, I would like to just experience that again for a little while. So I'm just going to pass that along. Um, but either way, Disneyland was really nice. Uh, we met up with Haley that day. And then we um, actually went to a hotel that Haley's dad was able to book for us. So that we got to stay there for free. It was a really nice hotel. Um, fairly close to Disneyland Shanghai. But... We got lost. Um, I'm being nice in saying we. We were following Haley. Um, but there was a couple, on, on her behalf, there's a couple different hotels of the same name in Shanghai, and they're all in different locations all over the city. So we had an address for the hotel with that name, and it turned out to be the wrong hotel. So we went, oh, we took the metro to this hotel and it took us like almost an hour and we had to take a taxi at one point. It was just, it took forever. And then we found out it was the wrong hotel. So we were all tired and we had to get back in a taxi. Then they got like put us in this taxi and told them to take us to the right hotel. And then we had to drive a ridiculous amount of distance and money to get pretty much back to where we started from to stay at this hotel. So then, uh, so like Haley had giant blisters on her feet and then it had a headache. So Walt and I, we went out, wandered around trying to find some food for everybody, scavenge up some grub. Um, came back, we watched some TV and fell asleep to that. Then the next day, uh, we ended up at the Jingning Temple. So if you go way back into my blog from when I first got to China and I was living in Shanghai for the month, um, I think there are some pictures of the Jingning Temple up there. So this is something that I had done previously, and I knew that it's something that is of great interest. So if you're ever in Shanghai, it's something to definitely do. And Walt is very much about the history of places and the culture. So we went to that for him because he uh, went to Disneyland for me. <laughs> so, you know, give and take. Um, so we walked around the temple. It was really nice. It's very serene. It's the coolest part about the temple. And I, I think I've said this before in my last blog about it, is that it's in the middle of the city. It's extremely busy. Cars are everywhere. I think there was like a Dunkin' Donuts down the street, which I think Walt was extremely excited about. Um, but so like, you know, big city. And then you go in the temple and it's like silent. It's so quiet. It's oddly serene and peaceful for being in the middle of the city. It's really neat. Um, and then after that, Walt had to leave us so that he could go to the airport and get a catch a flight so he could go back to work the next day. Um, Amanda and I, we ended up leaving Haley. Haley stayed the night with a friend, um, and we had to go catch the flight ourselves, but we had a flight later in the night. So we went back to the bun so that Haley could see that. Um, we had a little bit more jadza. 
And then we had to go find out where we were supposed to be in the airport. And then our flight ended up being delayed like some ridiculous amount of time. We sat in the airport forever. But thankfully we had a little bit of extra cash on us. Like, But neither of us had any money at this point. Um, but we had just enough that we could buy a little bit of food. Uh, I think we splurged a little <laughs> in the airport so that we could actually eat while we waited. Uh, and we arrived really, really early in the morning uh, back in Guangzhou. And I had received a message from Walt. He had gotten back, I, th I thought, with enough time um, to actually make it back to Ponyu to his house so that he could get ready for the next day and you know wouldn't have to rush or whatever. It turns out that his flight was also delayed, so he didn't make it back in time to catch the metro all the way home. So he just crashed at my house, which I'm completely fine with. Um, but I had never had him stay here without me being here before, so I've never had to tell him about the locks on my door. So I don't know if this is like every apartment in Guangzhou, but every apartment in my complex in Guangzhou, um, there are two separate locks on the door. There's a lock that the keys work with, and then there is the inside lock, the deadbolt. The keys do not unlock the deadbolts. I didn't tell Walt that, ever. So I was, I think, about like three in the morning, something ridiculous like that. Amanda and I got home to find out that we were locked out of my apartment. So we had to wake Walt up. I think it took us like five minutes to actually get him out of bed to come and open the door for us. I felt a little bad because um, that's mostly my fault for not mentioning that to him ever. But again, like I said, we've never been in a situation before that um, I was never home when he was. So you live and learn, I guess. And then thankfully he woke up and we were able to get back in the apartment because we had to leave at like 6.30 that morning. Uh, so that we could catch a train, or we'll buy tickets first, so we could catch a train to Hong Kong because um, Amanda had to fly back to Canada like really, really late that night or really, really early the next morning or something like that. Um, either way, it turned out that I didn't have enough money to actually stay in Hong Kong by myself for a night, and she wouldn't have been able to stay. Um, in the hotel with me because she would have had enough for the hotel but not enough for a taxi to get to the airport because the metro wouldn't have been open when her flight was. I think that's how it worked out. So she had to go to the airport really late at night in order to catch her really early morning flight. And because I didn't have a lot of money, I unfortunately had to leave her there so that I could come back home and catch the last train out of Hong Kong, which is at eight o'clock at night. It's ridiculously early. I don't understand why it's so early, because we're not that far away from each other, but whatever. So I had to leave her and take the train home so that I could afford to actually get back. Um, but we spent the day in Hong Kong. Uh, we went to the 4D movie, which is really cool. I think it depends on the movie that you see, um, how interesting it would be. For us, there was a lot of fire in the new X-Men movie and they release this weird smell into the theater. Um, I think it's supposed to be burning, but it doesn't smell like burning wood. It's more like a chemical-y smell. It was kind of odd. Um, but they released smoke, and at one point it was raining, and there was like water splashed into your face. It was, it was kind of interesting, and the chairs moved. Um, I went for some drinks, and then I had to leave her, like I said, to come home. So thankfully, I had one extra day off before I had to go to work. So that the 21st was my recovery day. I had a full day to just lay in bed and sleep because I had barely slept for three, four days at this point now. Like very little sleep and lots of travel. Uh, so it was really nice to have an extra day to just do absolutely nothing and uh, get ready for my work week that was ahead. Um, I only ended up having one day where I had to go into work um, no, that's a lie. I had a couple of days where I had to go into work. Unfortunately, I had to go through the weekend and uh, do some of my weekend classes. So I think I like a 12 hour day was my first day back or something like that. Um, but apparently I have blocked those memories. Maybe they were too painful. I'm not sure. Um, so on Tuesday on the 24th, uh, Walt came back in and we ended up going for tacos despite my limited budget. 
But, I mean, it's kind of nice having something different other than Chinese food or the normal American Western food that you can buy. Um, they're not the best tacos, but they're okay for what you can actually get in China, I guess. Flavor would be better. <laughs> some, some kind of spice in the taco would be good. Um, if anybody who makes the tacos in Guangzhou sees this, just throwing that out there. But overall, they're not bad. Like I said, for what you can get in China, it's, it's a nice reprieve from the normal. Um, and then the next day, like I said, I had been exhausted from our little vacation together. Um, so Walt and I, we just kind of stayed in and we had made some breakfast and we ordered KK Rabbit, which is this company that will deliver food from all these gourmet restaurants all over the city to your house. Uh, and I was finally dragged into the phenomenon that is Game of Thrones by Walt. So I'm now up to date in the show. Um, it's not, it's pretty good. It's not what I thought it was going to be like. Everybody was so excited about the show and I had never really had an interest in it, which I know for a lot of people is like blasphemous. Um, but, you know, I have some catching up to do still. A lot of what I know about the show is actually from him telling me, which is also, I guess, blasphemous for some people. So I'll have to go back and watch a lot of episodes. But I, uh, I know what's going on now, and I know who all the characters are. So overall, it's a, it's a pretty good show. I'll admit that. I, I actually enjoy it. I enjoyed it. Um... And then the next day, we decided, because we had spent all day in, and we've been doing that a lot of weekends, unfortunately, um, we need to go out and actually do something. I used to explore the city almost every weekend. I need to, to start doing that again, otherwise I'm going to end up being a hermit. Um, so we went out for lunch in uh, Junior Newtown. There's this giant underground mall uh, that is actually broken into four different seasons. I can't remember which season we were in to go get lunch, uh, but we found a fairly nice restaurant. And we ended up going to the library where we just kind of wandered around and then we went for a really long walk, meandering walk through the park, which was really nice. And ended up at a DVD stand and then I had to to leave him because he had to go home to Ponyu so that he could get ready for his work week. Um, so we are nearing quite a bit, a good chunk of time uh, here in this little um, expose for you of what I've been doing. So I'm going to pause this here uh, because this is a, probably a good end of the time. We're nearing the end of the month. Um, the very last day of uh, May, um, the 30th, we had an LP appreciation hot pot lunch. So we took our LPs for hot pot. Uh, and Haley's friends from America came to stay, and they ended up staying in my house because I have a spare bedroom. But they were both really nice, uh, Cass and Chris. They brought uh, uh, Coffee Crisp from Canada. They stopped over in Vancouver on their way here, and they brought a whole bunch on Haley's request because it's something that you can't actually get in America very easily, apparently. Uh, I think there's like a couple areas you can buy it, but it's not readily available all over the country, which is really weird to me. Apparently it's a Canadian chocolate bar. And uh, definitely can't get that in China. And they're very addictive, so <laughs> it's kind of nice to have that. Like I said, really nice people. I didn't mind them staying in my house at all. And then on the 31st, again, it was our next weekend. Um, so Walt came over and we ended up watching a horror movie that night. Well, Cass and Chris were dragged out by Haley to go to do something. I think they maybe took him to the inside room, which is this club here in China. Um, but yeah, I think this is a good place to kind of reset everything. So that is my month of May for you, uh, my entire trip with Amanda. And uh, now you kind of have an idea of what we're going to be getting into for June. And I will let you know how the next or the last month uh, went for me and everybody that I'm associated with, I guess. So I'll see you in a bit.